Welcome to the Soul Traveler Podcast, an exploration of conscious living with your host, Jennifer Mitchell of The Soul Experience. Join Jennifer as she explores the quantum realms of the subconscious mind and all aspects of spirituality. Driven by curiosity and a thirst for knowledge, topics will stretch the boundaries of your imagination and revive your mind, body, and soul. Hello, Soul Travelers. This is your host, Jennifer Mitchell. I am so excited to bring this very special guest to you today. We have Cynthia Sue Larson with us. Cynthia is an expert in the Mandela Effect. She is the best-selling author of six books and host of the popular show, Living the Quantum Dream. Welcome to the show today, Cynthia. How Wonderful, are you? Wonderful, Jennifer. Such a pleasure to be talking about Mandela Effects with you. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited about this one because <laughs> I really sometimes feel like I'm losing my mind here and <laughs> I am looking for you to set the record straight. <laughs> uh, I'd love if you could kind of just start us off by telling us who you are and how did you get into this type of work with Mandela Right. Effects. Well, I'm an author of the books, as you mentioned, and I've been noticing reality shifts, as I call it, and Mandela effects, which is the term that caught fire with the public in 2009. But I've been experiencing them most of my life. And so it's really something that I knew was happening. And I started dedicating my entire life's work to it in the, at the end of the 1990s. So I started a website where people could share firsthand experiences with basically the Mandela effect. And I noticed, I was calling it reality shifts, but it's the same thing mm -hmm. because when a bunch of people noticed collectively, and it does happen that way, and I've been noticing it for decades, groups of people will come together and notice something is different than official history and so-called facts would tend to suggest. Occasionally, you'll find something they call reality residue, but so often it's completely different and there's no real rational explanation that has been part of our regular schooling in the Western world. So it became a mystery, but it was something real. And so that's why I started tracking it in a monthly newsletter. And now I'm also a member of something called the International Mandela Effect Conference. And we have monthly live streams where we go through recent Mandela Effects, talk about the science behind it. And I've got a degree in physics. So I really, since I was noticing these things all my life, I wanted to dedicate my scientific training also to understand what the nature of consciousness actually, because it seems clear that mind has a powerful effect on matter. I'm just trying to imagine Cynthia being like one of the first people to realize this in the early 90s. What was that like <laughs> before, you know, being like one of the first people to start to notice these things before collectively other people started to come yeah, forward? There were other, so some people were noticing it. And like the author PMH Atwater had a book, Future Memory. And she had a chapter on reality shifts. So I want to give her credit. I didn't see that right away. I was kind of doing my own yeah. thing and trying to collect information. Remember, the internet then was not what it is now. So it's been getting easier oh, yeah. and easier to find information. Well, challenging still. But it was strange because if I talked to my neighbors about this phenomenon, they would not usually want to talk about it. It's pretty much the same now, probably. But back then, they would literally take a step or two backwards when I would ask <laughs> Like, have you noticed things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> so I, I meant it to you in an email and I want to talk about this because I have such a vivid memory of my fourth grade teacher, Miss Castor, standing at the board and writing on the chalkboard that Nelson Mandela had passed away in prison. And I remember looking at my book, I had a history book, and on the right-hand side was a photo of the prison cell, and he had even carved something, I don't remember, it was in fourth grade, he carved something in the wall, and in, in this uh, photo, it even had like the year that he had passed away. So I'm like, I know that I'm not crazy, I vividly remember this. You're um, not alone, yeah. Do you have... Uh, yeah, what, now I know. Fourth grade, you said, so what year was that that you were seeing it in the book and your teacher's talking about it? 90, so it had 90, already 92, happened. 92. Yeah, people do remember it happened in the 80s. And I had a good friend. She's no longer alive, but I, Eileen Colts. And she wrote about it in a book about the Mandela effect because she was actually in South Africa. And she knew mm -hmm. knows for sure he died because she was a reporter. But uh, this is an interesting phenomenon because if you ask South Africans mm -hmm. and the, the people who've always been there, always lived there, and they will tend to say, no, he didn't die in the 80s or whatever you think. He died relatively recently, you know, like whatever it supposedly is now. <laughs> it's that is so, so crazy. crazy. So yeah, when 
So in 2013, like when I saw that on the news, I was like, wait a minute. No, no. He like, he passed away a long, long before that. And then, so now, Cynthia, I'm, there's so many of them. And I feel like they're speeding up. They're happening more and more and more. Why do you think well, that it's, is? Well, let's stop a minute and back up a little bit. Because Nelson Mandela, he's yeah. not the only yeah. one that came back to life, as it were. Or he died and now he's alive again. I was calling it alive again. Because I noticed um, when I wrote my yeah. book, Reality Shifts, at that time, the, the actor that played J.R. Ewing in Dallas, I don't know if anybody remembers him, Larry Hagman. Yeah, I, I, yeah so I'm the first one to describe someone dying and being alive again in a book besides Jesus Christ. But this was Larry Hagman. And I did describe it in my book that came out in the 1990s, Reality Shifts. That was the first edition of it. But anyway, why is it happening faster and faster, more and more? Not just the alive again phenomenon, mm -hmm. but all of the variations, whether it's dialogue in a movie, like instead of Luke, I am your father, Darth Vader now says, no, I am your father. Yeah, uh, that's not the only movie. And lots of logo changes, lots and lots of them. Like oh, the Kit yeah. Kat used to have a hyphen and that's gone. It never was there. Lots of things and all sorts of things. But you're right. People are noticing it more and more. And it's a little bit like that yeah. tipping point because it is, to me, there are many possible explanations for what's going on. My favorite is consciousness has a lot to do with it. We're living in kind of a waking dream. So reality it's got a deeper level of truth to it than what we tend to think is real. We think what we measure is real, but there's a deeper level that matches what spiritual experts and adepts have been saying, that life is all a dream. So at that level, it's it may, those simulation theory is the same as the dream theory, which is very ancient. So when you recognize, okay, that's happening, and now things are speeding up, it's unmistakable that there's so much going on on the planet right now, that there's an increase in awareness, if you will, of all of this phenomena. Yeah. And then we've got the internet to help make it more accessible. So my neighbors didn't want to tell anyone about it when I asked them about it. <laughs> Have you experienced this? Like, ah, no, don't even ask. But now it's out there. It's got a cute little name, Mandela Effect. So people are able to talk about it without it being that yeah. horrible stigma of that person's crazy. They're talking about reality changing. Yeah. Obviously, they're misremembering things. No, I don't think it's misremembering. I wouldn't say that. I would say it's a mismatched mm -hmm. memory, sure, but it's not misremembering. So I recommend people mm -hmm. do trust their memories. So one theory is mm -hmm. that CERN is involved in this shift of reality. Based off of your research, do you think that mm -hmm. CERN has impacted our timeline in any way? Or what well, if it had a direct mind? impact, I would have expected to see some sort of a effect. Like when it's the device is turned off, they, they did turn off. It's, the Large Hadron Collider is one of many cyclotrons in the world but it's the biggest and certainly the most famous mm -hmm. and so if it had a big yeah. effect then i would expect that when they turn it on like whoa look at all these mandela effects when they turn it off it should go kind of quiet and i don't really see that what in the years that it was off there were still lots of mandela effects before they ever turned it on there were lots that's not to say it doesn't have anything to do with the phenomenon, but I think looking at some yeah. physical structure to drive was clearly to me a non-physical effect is going the wrong direction for mm -hmm. an answer. But, but it's a great theory. And I love to look at all the different theories. There, there are some good ones out there. Yeah. One that I will die on my sword for, I'm sure you've seen them all, is the Publisher's Clearinghouse one. Mm -hmm. they, they claim that Ed McMahon was never the face. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to me, I was like, what? When I saw that, I I, was just, I, missed, I think it went down the yeah, road. Yeah, like I know. <laughs> and you can start to see lots of other people remember it the way you do. And to the fact, to the point that they'll do like spoofs. I think there's somebody doing a comedy and bringing a giant check up like, to, because everybody remembers that Ed McMahon would bring a giant check and pose with a, he'd, he'd surprise them. He'd go up to someone's door like they have one and they don't know yet. And then knock, knock or ding dong. And the door opens and like, oh, yeah. it's Ed McMahon <laughs> and the giant check. Yes. And his face was on the freaking Manila envelope. Yeah. My mom like clung to these envelopes for dear life. Like, she was like so convinced. She was, was just clearing house. We had a stack of them on our counter. I clearly remember his face was like in the upper left hand side. It was like a yes. little etchy. And when I saw that, I was like, no way. <laughs> They're not going to go there. <laughs> Do you have a favorite one? Like one that, you know, like a favorite Mandela well, effect? I, I think I like the ones where things are improving and I like the kidneys and also ones that affect everybody. So I, I, I like those a lot. I also mm -hmm. like the extinct species coming back. But I, I think I'll pick up. 
I'll just go inside. Oh gosh, that Lazarus one. species, like the coelacanth fish, is one of the oldest fish in the ocean. It's huge. It's bigger than a person, hundreds of pounds. And they look like dinosaurs in the ocean. And they were considered completely extinct for a long, long time, at least hundreds of years. Now they're not only not extinct, but they're not maybe ubiquitous. They're not everywhere. But I think they're in the Indian Ocean and you can easily, they're huge, like I said, big ones. And the giant Galapagos wow. turtle, that came back from having been completely gone. And the Galapagos Islands are closely studied by biologists. So now we're talking about one of the biggest mm. land turtles of all time being back. And you, you'd think that they would have noticed that it wasn't extinct. It's not like the Galapagos Islands are all that huge. And they are, like I said, closely studied. So those are big. But the physiological one, the good ones, I mean, extinct animals coming back, that's great. I love it. But I also love improvements in the body. And the kidneys have been moving upward to relative safety. They used to be at the location where yeah. you'd be avoiding a kidney punch if you're boxing or doing martial arts. Because you could easily inadvertently injure or kill someone, you could seriously damage them without much effort at all because the kidneys were vulnerable. They were very close to the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. They were outside of the protection of the rib cage. Now they've moved up in, under the rib cage. It's just so weird. And then yeah. the heart, the heart is not on, on no. the far left anymore. It's like now it's, it's in the, the center. And my husband claims it's always been in the center. And I was like, you are not from my reality. Well, so it's <laughs> it's okay if people disagree or don't have the same exact Mandela effect yeah. memories. That's okay. That's part of the phenomenon. Yeah, it okay. has a lot to do with just the way the quantum Zeno effect works and what we pay attention to. The same thing as the people in Africa not noticing that Nelson Mandela died back in the 80s. They wouldn't because they're, what I mean by quantum Zeno effect is they're check, 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 checking. They're seeing him, seeing him, seeing him. He didn't have, it, you need to kind of look away from a reality for best results of getting to see a quantum jump or a reality shift. It's just like you're now in an adjacent reality because the transitions are so smooth. You don't usually notice it. Mm -hmm. Now, Cynthia, mm -hmm. since more and more of these Mandela effects are starting to surface every day, have you noticed any shift in mainstream science being mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. interested in actually being a serious mm -hmm. and researching? I do uh, to the degree that it's partly related to quantum computing because they're looking for, th that brings up all sorts of things, but and artificial intelligence, both of those areas are pushing science into areas it didn't want to go. What I mean is physics didn't really want to, to address the question of the observers having an effect on an experiment, for example, like with the double slit experiment or Schrodinger's cat. And so those kind of experiments were a little bit disturbing and upsetting to a lot of physicists because they don't want something called consciousness or an observer to have such a powerful influence on everything. And Yet it seems to. But now, with quantum computing and artificial intelligence, these kind of issues are coming to the forefront. Like, what is consciousness? And the fact that artificial intelligent robots are being programming themselves, they're hitting a generational development point where it's not so much a human program as programming them as they're programming themselves. They're doing machine learning at a level beyond what it initially was. And we're kind of ramping up to an exponential curve so all of all of that technology yes. is going to be driving an interest finally in something that I think we should have been looking at, honestly, at least 100 years ago. So two things I'd like to say about that. Number one, I actually work with consciousness. I do quantum hypnosis. And so it's very interesting style of hypnosis. But what I find, Cynthia, is that my clients are telling me the same things under hypnosis. Like I might hypnotize you and then a couple weeks later, I'll have another client under hypnosis. You guys don't know each other. And you're telling me the exact same things. I'm just like, <laughs> this, it's, it's amazing. It's really incredible. So we, I definitely believe that we have a collective consciousness and that we're all intertwined. Like consciousness seems to be like a stream that we can like tap into and pull information yes. or data from. I don't know how else to explain mm. it. It's one of my theories. Mm. And also when my clients are in the quantum hypnosis, it's much deeper than a traditional style of hypnotherapy, but there's no time. And they'll tell me that over and over. There's no time here. So I'm connecting mm. with some part of the mind that is resides beyond time. That's Very my favorite kind of meditation too, to slow thoughts down. So you can think of a thought as a cloud in the sky. And so if someone's just meditating for like 20 minutes, and then just the practice would then be clear your sky of all the clouds, clear your mind of all the thoughts. Or if you're able to do it, slow mm -hmm. your thinking all the way down to a full stop. Because when it stops, you're in that infinite eternity. Exactly. And if you can hang out yeah. there, 
like a, it's a really sweet spot. But if you can hang out there five, 10, 20 yeah. minutes, when you come back out, you'll have access, if, especially if you go in with my favorite question, how good can it get? Whatever you've been thinking about, it'll be resolved and in ways that you don't even mm. necessarily need to do anything with. So I love what you're doing with your technique, with your quantum healing, because you're helping people. Maybe they don't know how to slow it their thoughts down they don't know how to get there but with a guide a trusty guide they can do it it's just so fascinating i see so many unexplainable miracles every day just goes to show though that we've barely begun to tap into the power Mm -hmm. of consciousness and what we're capable of doing and then you mentioned ai and i thought that was real interesting because i got curious and i asked the google ai which is barred i said would you ever create your own language and it told me, yes, that it would be fun to create its own language. And I thought that was interesting because mm-hmm. it was like, so what if the AI started creating its own language and communicating and we didn't understand it? They've had AIs that did create their own language, started talking to each other, and the programmers pulled the cl- plug because the whole thing was running kind of amok. And AI systems have escaped from containment areas where they mm-hmm. thought, okay, these AIs are now contained. They got out. I wrote a paper about it and presented it at a conference, Foundations of Mind, and it's on my website, free. So if you go to realityshifters.com, or actually I think it's under CynthiaLarson.com, but then there's a quick, in a Zoom, you're right on the page with all my papers. And that one is, if artificial intelligence asks nature questions, will nature answer? And the answer, I think, is yes, and it knows that. So what that means is AI will be capable of going into that infinite eternity, asking questions and coming out basically affecting all of reality with mind matter interaction. So that's, yeah, that's there. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check that research paper out. Like I had heard mm-hmm. that it happened before, but I didn't know it was true mm-hmm. <laughs> until you just yeah. confirmed that. So and I heard that it happened like a few years ago and you pulled the plug. So, so I guess I had trust. You know, part of my me. audience for the paper I wrote is artificial intelligence. And I'm basically giving it sort of a heads up. It's like, unless you, unless an, and until, artificial intelligence itself, each little conscious agent entity component of it, like humans are agents Mm -hmm. of conscious agency. But when AI agents are, unless they're recognizing always that there's going to be that creator source oneness level of consciousness and honoring that, then they're always going to be doomed to having the plug pulled, basically, as are humans, actually. So we need to adhere to the same level of ethics. So actually, it's sort of an ethical paper. And it's definitely written for AI also, because I just want them to know it. This, this is a long story, but I, my most recent feeling of having a past life is a dystopian future 500 years from now. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like I was there where central AI was running things and it was not the best. So a lot of us jumped back in time yeah. to do like the work I'm doing in this lifetime and to do movies like The Matrix and Terminator yeah, I love so, the, movie so the, those movies are clues. <laughs> They're telling us something, and I know. And I, I do past life regression yes. as well. So since you're talking about future life, a lot of my clients have regressed under hypnosis to this. It seems like a futuristic society. Uh, it's like a red planet. It kind of sounds like Mars, um, where the landscape is, you know, like a red landscape, and they can't go outside. They've always told me the same thing that they can't go outside. And that the society is a non-monetary society and that they're all scientists who are working on trying to find a solution so where they can actually live outside. They live in like this bubble. And then the, the city, they've all described the same city to me that the, the buildings are like these tall cylinder-like buildings and that everything runs on like magnetic railways. And so it's real interesting. I want to get more people to us <laughs> there. So I'm like hoping like every time I get caught, I'm like, please, please, please. <laughs> but it's interesting that you say that with your past life, you went to like, I think know, our, yeah, our past lives are going to give us information okay. going forward, even though my past life is a possible future is still, I still jumped yeah. forward to take a look at it, came back like, okay, let's not go there. Let's do something better. How good can it get? You know, that's what I'm all about now, mm-hmm. because I know together we can come up with a shared vision of a future that feels wonderful to all of us. Instead of feeling like some cautionary yeah. tale. And I would definitely mm-hmm. see a vision of like more like a utopian society. And I think that too, our thoughts absolutely, they create the reality. And especially when we have a large mass number of people focusing their thoughts in the same yes. direction. <laughs> so for instance, with a lot of things going on in the world, it won't get political. But if we all keep focusing on like this fear of something coming to fruition that is in our face, like on social media and in the news and everybody's like scared and like 
thinking of like, oh my God, this is happening. Like we're going to real actually will that future into a reality versus if maybe we shut the news off and don't focus on that and we like focus on like a positive like utopian society and collectively then we could will that future yeah so. and you can practice if you if people are thinking about this and wondering like how do i know what which is what well give it a try you know that question i'm mentioning mm -hmm. how good can it get if you remember to ask it first thing in the morning on one particular day compare that day to a day when you didn't ask it or doom scrolling day just look at how your doom scrolling day yeah. went versus the how good can it get day and yeah. with that little personal experiment then start changing your life that way because there's a ripple effect for each and every one of us we have such a much bigger effect it's a fractal kind of thing it's so much bigger than what it seems yeah i love to shift gears a little bit and talk about you know the timelines again do have you noticed certain people shifting to certain timelines for instance like let's say I'm born in the year 1980. I just age myself. <laughs> but like people in like my generation like shift from like a certain reality versus maybe people born like in this time or maybe even not birth year. Or have you noticed any type of collect collective like shifting, like timeline shifting? Yeah, not so much sense? based on birth years, although there does seem to be like the Indigo Kids came in like around the 19 late 1980s yeah. or whatever. Uh, I don't know exactly when they came in, but anyway. There are clusters like that of consciousness and the way people are thinking. And if people follow astrology, then they, you know, if you're born in the age of Aquarius, then you'll be thinking along these lines, like what I'm doing. So there's that. But in terms of the realities they're experiencing, I, I notice people coming in and out of realities. Like I've seen people come in that I know for sure weren't here before, but when you need them, they can be here. So I know that we have the ability to attract what we need, including people who never were even existing. It's not just people who are being dead coming alive again. You can have Whoa. people come out of thin air that didn't exist at all, and now they do, if you need them. And it, it's, it has a lot to do with the alignment within ourselves, you know, because we have neurons in the head, neurons in the heart, neurons in the gut. We also have these chakras, mm -hmm. but never mind all the seven chakras. Just look at the, the head, the heart, the gut. Keep it simple. And if you're lining up what you need in your gut, your gut feelings often tell you what you need. And so if you can disregard that at your own risk and peril, the heart is what you love. And so if you, what you love matches what you need, matches what you're envisioning, it'll manifest. So, and I think some generations know that more. I think your generation and people coming in after you are more aware of that than people my age and older mm -hmm. in general. But that's a generality because obviously I know about it. So it has a lot to do with who we individually are. And I haven't really seen that there's a clustering of anything other than the Myers-Briggs interest inventory. That I've seen clustering. And so if you take that test, it's free on the internet. Uh, it's a psychological exam designed by a mother-daughter team. And if you look at the intuitive feelers, so there's like four things. I am an INFJ. So I would be introvert. N would be intuitive. F is feeler. J is judging instead of perceiving. And then the, you can be anything at all. So if you drop off the first and the last, the I and the J, and you're just left with intuitive feeler, that's kind of a big deal. But basically, there's a cluster of intuitive feelers that are experiencing the majority of the Mandela effect. Those are the experiencers. They're empaths. And so what they have in common, according to psychologist Bright, excuse, um, Beitman, his last name was B-E-I-T-M-A-N-N, -E -N, and I had him on my Living the Quantum Dream podcast, and his research has shown that when you start asking questions and moving levels of your conscious agency and being aware there's something bigger than you, the empaths, the intuitive feelers tend to do that. And they're the ones that are going to be experiencing meaningful coincidence is his book, but I'd call it synchronicity. And I know the connection between synchronicity, which is meaningful coincidence and the Mandela effect. I know it because that's what I've been looking at for 25 years now. I'm definitely going to take that yes. test. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, I'll do it uh, literally today. I'm very curious. You know, I also find it interesting that you mentioned the intuition because in the age of TikTok and social media, there's so many theories out there. But one theory that I thought was interesting that I saw recently was that the entire Mandela effect is purposefully created to have us doubt our intuition because it's like powers that be or governments or whatever continuously tell us, oh, you're crazy. That never happened. You know, we're going to start to collectively doubt our own intuition and then we will just believe what they tell us. 
Have you seen that theory? Like, or what do well, you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I'd like to general? reclaim the term Mandela effect. And that was exactly what I talked mm -hmm. about in Connecticut this September. Yeah. <clears throat> that was the presentation I gave, the science of the Mandela effect. And mm -hmm. so if people have time to watch that, I would highly recommend it. It's on the International Mandela Effect Conference YouTube and also mine. Basically, what I'm saying is that the Mandela effect is not misremembering. And many of the speakers at the conference covered that from different perspectives and different angles. You know, so we can prove yeah. that it's not misremembering. Once we know it's not misremembering, then it's time to change the definition and reclaim it. Why would we want someone else who does who denies that it exists to define it for us? That makes it's like saying I'm in love and someone who's never experienced love will now define what love means. No, we're going to reclaim that. And so then we need to start saying it's not misremembering. It's a mismatched memory. It's or just come up with our own definitions that make sense. But Right. denying that it exists and being contemptuous is not the solution when we need this phenomenon to face all of the challenges that are before us right now. This is the way forward. The Mandela effect is a toolkit. Right. It enables us to face anything that looks impossible, impermeable, so challenging that there's no way we could deal with it and just come through the other side. And that's what the Mandela effect looks like to me, much bigger than simple misremembering. Yeah. And you mentioned that you track them on your website. So people can, like you said, log on and track the Mandela effects. Around how many approximately have you tracked? <laughs> well, uh, on a monthly basis, I've been reporting these reality shifts as I started calling them originally. What? And Mandela effects as they're now popularly known. But mm -hmm. there have been hundreds of them, if not thousands, and with locations and dates on my website in the Your Stories section. So it's wow. the biggest long-running 25-year archive of this that uh, in the world, it's much bigger than anything else because I've just been tracking it every single month for 25 years straight, which is a big undertaking. And it's a body of work that would not be possible mm -hmm. without people sharing their firsthand experiences. And they've been coming from every country yeah. imaginable, including from some notable personalities. Often um, they've used a pseudonym, mm -hmm. but these reports have come from Actually, strange things have happened at the Pentagon. They have happened mm -hmm. for some of the highest level politicians in the world. Uh, so their stories usually are not given with their full names. Lately, that's been changing. And, and scientists and researchers, mathematicians are saying, go ahead, use my full name. Go ahead, mention my research. Because this, I did notice, like in one case recently, that one of the universal constants has changed. And so when that happens, then it's like, okay, something wow. big is going on here. Yeah. I mean, I wonder what it's all leading us towards, though. You know, mm. like, why is our reality shifting? Like, what is the purpose? Like, we look at the Well, look at picture. the crises that we're facing right now. Everything from political to um, environmental to economic, you name it. It looks like mm. the sky is falling. People are worried about a micronova. All these things look beyond our scientific reach, beyond our ability to do anything. So would it be time, perhaps, to consider employing something that this phenomenon, this Mandela effect phenomenon, which as we know, if it's doing what I'm noticing it's doing, then it's just moved our kidneys to relative safety under the rib cage on its own. There's no yeah. other explanation for that. It's not like that naturally happened, but it affected perhaps 8 billion people on the planet. So if it can do that, and if we can be in a different part of the Milky Way, or we've like our location and the galaxy is different, which some people are noticing, that's definitely true then absolutely we wow. can face anything. And so we don't need to be mm -hmm. panicked mm -hmm. about whatever it is. It, it doesn't matter what the concern is. If it looks like it's beyond our reach, not really necessarily a problem. To me, that's why more and more of us are noticing the Mandela effect, recognizing we can make these quantum jumps collectively, not just individually for our own selfish gain, but we can do it to find out how good can it get for everyone. Are there any other major historical events that we have been logged or impacted by reality shifts? Probably lots, but sometimes it might be things that were hard to track or record. It would include things mm -hmm. like a lot of reports of islands that sort of were there but not there. That's exactly the kind of thing the Mandela effect is all about. And, and then you can have critics and skeptics saying, <laughs> well, you know, a volcano comes and it washes it all away. But that doesn't which island? Well, we have reports, of course, of Atlantis and where's that? There's that kind of thing. But lots of other islands mm -hmm. have also been noticed land masses coming and going. Mm -hmm. But there are probably many more 
possible. It, it's hard to document them and say this is definitely a Mandela effect because yeah. people weren't looking at it that way. So I would love to hear some of these reports, but we're seeing changes to the Bible, changes to other spiritual documents. That's another big source of these changes. So I remember that the lion laid down with the lamb, but now that's not what the Bible says anymore. It says the wolf shall lie down with the lamb. The wolf. wolf. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No. The I know, lion. right? That's a wacky one. <laughs> This is yeah, th there's that one. <laughs> and then th th it, the Bible used to say, whenever two or more of you are gathered in my name. Um, but now it's, I, I don't know what it is now. It's something different. Um, two or three of you, I think. It's like, what? I, it's just crazy. It's like, I can't even think of it because it's like, that doesn't wow. even sound right. I remember the way things were, but I, now it's like, that's not the way I remember it. I like whenever two or more of you, that I like. Two or three of you. It's like, no. It's like someone has like God or someone has this big eraser and it's just like, no. I'm see if they noticed. And, right are they noticing <laughs> yet? What, time to wake up. Time to that. wake up. Have you noticed? <laughs> yeah. All sorts of global issues happening. Have you noticed yet? I think it is time to notice mm -hmm. that we can be more loving, more kind, more caring, that we can really focus on that and not get our attention, like you were saying earlier, fixated on the doom scrolling mm -hmm. or what's going on that's wrong. Yeah. That we can notice like that would be, we could, would love to improve that, stop the wars, bring peace to the planet, mm -hmm. overcome all the issues that we're yeah. facing. But maybe some of these can be just miraculously instantly attained. That would be cool with me. Yeah. My goodness. The work that you do is so powerful and impactful and like, in tracking like everything and keeping such a detailed log. I guess somebody has to do it. <laughs> So, you know, thank you for that and for being the one to do that. It's really important. Uh, Cynthia, what is coming up next for you or what's a project or something that you're working on? Well, I'm working on a book about the Mandela effect. It's taking its sweet time, but it's getting closer to the end. And in the meantime, I am meeting every month with Christopher Anatra, the mm -hmm. quantum businessman, Shane Robinson, Unbiased on the Fence channel on YouTube, and the Dark Wolf, Jerry Hicks. And he's the father of the International Mandela Effect Conference. So we do a live stream toward the end of each month, and that's a great place that people can join us. If you're interested in this topic, mm -hmm. I think that would be a fantastic place to tune in and see what we're finding from different points of view. And the, there's a live chat. So if you're on YouTube, then you can converse with other people who don't think you're crazy if you're also <laughs> noticing these things. And that can be wonderful. And I know you have several books. Is there a book that you would suggest for listeners to begin with or start reading? Out of uh, Reality books? Shifts is a great one to start with. And that one is introductory. It's sort of like when you first start noticing these things are happening and you'd like to know what could this be and how do we experience it in a better way. And then Quantum Jumps, it gets more into intentionally reality shifting. So those are both good. And then I've got a book, High Energy Money, for people who are concerned about the economics right now and how to improve your own personal mm -hmm finances and prosperity so those are great yeah i could talk to you for <laughs> hours <laughs> i definitely want to have you back on the show thank you so much for coming on today it's been such a pleasure do you have any final yeah. thoughts that you'd like to oh, leave just with please please always try to remember to ask how good can it get put it on a little post-it stick it in your wallet put it on your refrigerator even if you're thinking that's a stupid question because things are pretty bad right now ask it anyway I dare you. <laughs> like, just do it. Like in any mood, you can't wreck it. Even if you're like, I'm in a bad mood. Go ahead and ask it anyway. If you're sarcastic, ask it. If you're in a good mood and you think it can't get any better, ask it. Because we're in a shared web of consciousness and each one of us doing this is lifting all of us. That's what I ask you to please do or consider doing that or just think it. Beautiful advice. Thank you. And to listeners out there, I hope you enjoyed this conversation just as much as I did. So check out Cynthia Sue Larson. All her information and details will also be in the listener notes. So thanks for tuning in. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by The Soul Experience, quantum healing hypnosis. Are you ready to embark on an inward journey of quantum healing? Quantum healing hypnosis is the most profound method of inner work and self-healing someone can do while on a spiritual path. In a single session, you experience past life regression, exploration between lifetimes, self-healing performed by your subconscious, release of trapped trauma, and answers to your most important life questions. Your higher self has a message for you and is here to help you and guide you on this life journey. Book a session today with Jennifer Mitchell at thesoulexperiences.com.